right, Jason Rona, back here again in the J Concepts Garage for another vlog episode. This time we're talking 110 scale and 18 scale off road racing, uh, new products, uh, you know. And we're here again with Fred Reap. Uh, Fred uh, did a lot of design work here on a lot of these different products and obviously testing them, checking them out, going over samples, uh, kind of putting these uh, different items together. Uh, we got kind of a couple of my vehicles out here on display. But, uh, you know, Fred, one of the items uh, right away that uh, I think racers really kind of identify with us is we got this servo mount brace and bracket item that we uh, we started with uh, with the B5, B5M vehicles. We've kind of kind of transitioned now to the B6.3s, the latest generation. But, uh, Fred, kind of going back to when we started with this item, you, you worked on this a lot, worked on transitioning to the new car, um, you know, what do you say about uh, working on this project with the uh, the aluminum servo mount brace? Yeah, it really works well. I mean, for you know, getting your servo in there and tightening it up, it uh, it makes a really nice uh, package. Uh, you know, even with the badging of the J Concepts across the top, adds a little nice little flair to it. But yeah, it really tightens it up. Getting your servo mounted in there, uh, still all the same you know features and benefits all the way from the B5 and. Uh, yeah, just making small tweaks. It, it's very uh, hasn't changed very much as far as you know what has you know to make it fit in the car basically. But it all works well. Yeah, that, I mean the function is obviously you know when when we're driving these cars, what happens is when the servo is actually you know in the vehicle, there is play that is can the servo can actually move inside the the servo mount. So if you hit something while you're turning or uh, it can jam the servo around. So what we did is, uh, back when we started with this, is we, we put some set screws in the side that we want to touch off against the servo. Now, it's not something you'd normally want to brace against, but we're kind of just utilizing it as a touch point so the servo is staying where you want it, so your trim is staying consistent when you're driving. And I think this was a big thing going back to you know the worlds we ran in Japan uh, you know with Spencer Rivkin and just many... Uh, variations along the line but and it and it just seems to add to me I call it like the pro touch uh, with this item is once you put this on the car it's got the badging as you mentioned on the top and to me it's really a, just a nice finishing touch and it has a lot of purpose right and you know with the set screws you're not really burying them into the servo it's that's not what we wanted to accomplish it's actually just setting and holding the servo nice and true that way if, again you don't bury and knock the servo out of adjustment you know you're keeping that nice and true in the car so you know that was one of the things we wanted to make sure to have for the latest uh you know team associated car it's it's uh it's something that we're kind of known for it's like i said that finishing touch but it really does have a nice look in the car available in black and blue but it also uh has a great function and, and that's what i really like about that part i mean i've had so many drivers and uh, different racers tell me that it's one of the favorite things that we have for the vehicle and you know I've, I've had drivers tell me that I got the car because of this item like they just they they love the way it looks in the car and I agree I think it's just something that really kind of ties it all together uh, another item that obviously important on on these vehicles now today with everything being as lightweight as possible uh, we've had titanium front axles in the past for the for the team associated car, but what we wanted to do is is kind of take another step uh, with the front axle. Uh, the last generation we had, it's still available, is uh, adjustable width. So we have that that uh, spacer in there where you can you can adjust the overall width of the car. That's something that wasn't available prior to us having that particular one. Uh, but now what we want to do is take the look. The finish and sort of the design another another step with this front axle is you know uh, incorporating a different design where we sort of have these uh, blooming I call it blooming flower look where uh, the thing is is changed the design so it's more uh, you know inside out where we have pads that the wheel sits on now right uh, we have removed sections for even a lighter weight uh, approach and we've got the difference in coloring between having the, uh, you know, we got anodized black, and then we come back in the other process and, and, and highlight some silver areas and then add some logos. But, 
you know, Fred, you've, you've installed these, you've put them on the car, checked the samples, looked over the production. And uh, when you're kind of working with this, uh, what are some things that you kind of notice about having either lightweight parts or just kind of taking it a step further with either the coloring or removing even more weight? Yeah, a lot of the times when you're walking through the pits and, you know, you guys are working on them, most of the time the tires and wheels aren't even on them. You, you know, you're either working on the car, or you're doing something to that tires. So, you know, just looking at it on sitting on the bench, you, you know, have it look nice with the wheels off. So, you know, as an added performance, you know, with the titanium and all that, you know, lightweight, super strong, you, know, you can add some details in there, take out even a little bit more weight, make it look a little more trick, and it's got to perform, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's different options uh, along the board with either whether it's turnbuckles, you know, which is something we've known for since about 2011 with the uh, the fin titanium turnbuckles, you know, the um, the revolved notches that we have, we call them the fins on the turnbuckles. We got, you know, then we went to the black in color with the silver right. uh, highlighted areas, and now we kind of have the the axles that sort of like. It's just kind of taking it another step in, in looks and performance that uh, wasn't there before. Right. Yeah. Just, you know, taking, again, the performance, making it work, and then just adding that extra little flair to it to make it nice. So another thing, you know, we've we've released some, some items that are easier for the customer to either use or work on. Uh, one of the items is um, the new pre-trimmed wing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have two different widths here. We have the six and a half and the seven inch with which when we made the six and a half i never thought well, we would need or use a seven inch wide uh, wing but after using this carpet and turf wing that we have for several uh, events uh, one of the things that we wanted to add is we we thought well let's give this the seven a little wider uh, wing a, a chance and um, you know we got uh, paul win here working uh, on these projects running so much 10 scale off-road uh, we worked together with Fred in kind of recreating um, what we had created by hand. We recreated in the computer right. um, to create this wider version and just kind of uh, make the details a little more crisp. And then we wanted to add the next level, which was the pre-trimmed ability. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on there. And, you know, maybe this is the third design out of, you know, when we first started messing with that from the original uh, the handmade mold so uh yeah there were some challenges and paul i got to work along with paul and uh he got to see firsthand on you know working with the computer not necessarily what you're drawing off of a mold is actually what you're seeing on the screen so you know right away you know him seeing that you know we were able to work back and forth and actually come up with the final design it works really well yeah i mean i i kind of by surprise i sent some of the drivers of mayfield spencer rivkin i sent these guys some of these wings uh, just you know packaged ready to go already pre-trimmed and uh you know i, I just kind of waited you know i just sent these things out mm -hmm. just kind of waited and all of a sudden you get the text back and say wow these wings are rad like you know like i mean these things are so nice because you know granted they're all when you cut them properly they're they work they perform but there's just something about when it's uh when it's perfectly cut out and trimmed when you put it on there, it just it feels good. Yeah, and it makes you even a more efficient racer. I mean, when you're hitting the easy button on some of this stuff, you just want to bolt on a part and go quick. Sitting there trimming it out and, you know, did I trim it right or the way I exactly want it? But, yeah, having the pre-trim, another easy button, makes you more efficient in the pits. You can focus more on your racing. You just slap another wing on it and go. So, you know, where we kind of trim the rear height, the gurney height, too, is sort of like what I would say the, the most popular. But, of course, if you want, we got big jumps or you're outdoors and it's windy, you can keep cutting that gurney down in the back, open it up. But uh, I think this is the most popular setting and kind of what we went with, um, you know, for the pre-trimmed uh, carpet and uh, turf wing. So really like the way it came out, kind of just adds to... Uh, another level, like you said, hitting the easy button with some of these items, which is just uh, so important in today's uh, market and today's racing. Uh, but we're, you know, kind of proud of how that came out. And so, uh, yeah, nice job on that, Fred. And um, I look forward to not mounting my next one. Yeah. <laughs> so um, next item we want to kind of go over here was the, the metal car stand. And... We probably started this, I would say, maybe two and a half years ago, 
um, you know, we were, I was doing some events with, with the, with the guys, uh, and, you know, kind of noticed the, you know, the height differences, of course, and the eight scales and the 10 scales. Uh, but then there's also truggies to consider mm-hmm. even bigger. And, uh, you know, we were at some of these different events with the eight scale cars and I kind of felt like, you know, that there's been metal car stands in the past. There's been a bunch of them, but I wanted to really work on something that I felt kind of had like a different look to it that wasn't out there already, kind of incorporated some uh, positioning, some areas for the shocks, different 10 scale or 8 scale shocks in the top, and wanted to incorporate some handles. I know when we've worked with Paul in the past, um, something that's always important to him when moving the car around is being able to hold the car stand and the car uh, together because Mm -hmm. sometimes you move them together. Uh, We wanted to have some handles on there. And then just the actual shape of this stand was kind of where it all started uh, sketching this, this, uh, you know, this profile of this, of this thing, and then having some room for the logos, uh, you know, what we want to say on there in terms of the branding and, um, and then kind of going into the cushion part of it, which is, you know, having a, a foam pad on the top and the bottom and, uh, you know, Fred, you had the original, we, we had a 3d printed one mm-hmm. and, you know, we, we worked with the height a couple times, the size a couple times to where we kind of, you know, came back to, uh, you know, the, the production size here, but, you know, having something like this and then having the foam pads, you know, talk about having the placement for the items and, and, you know, just having the foam pads for, you know, basically setting the car on it and it's just makes it that much nicer yeah you just don't want the car slipping and off the uh your car stand when you're moving it around or if somebody bumps a table it's important to have the pads you know and also you're going metal to metal or you know if you have the uh the pa- the tape on the chassis tape on it you know that can make a really slippery surface so yeah, you know, the nice foam pads it makes it nice you know i kind of look at this and see it has like that motocross type look you see some really fancy motocross stands for, you know, the uh, dirt bikes and stuff. It kind of really gives that kind of look to it. And, you know, the badging on it, it just it kind of has the total package, which makes it nice. You know, one of the things we wanted to incorporate here, you know, where we got different color options. You know, mm-hmm. we've always had the blue and the black colors available through J Concepts. But now with the RM2 line, uh, with uh, Ryan Mayfield, you know, we're kind of um, using a red color. And it enables us to kind of add another popular color combination. We went ahead and took an, another step. We added a, a full color box print uh, so that we could identify this thing from a ways away. But also, uh, you know, we have the locations for each different uh, color. You know, it's mm-hmm. marked on on the box. So went ahead and kind of took the the packaging to another level too. Yeah, kind of something where we started with the regulator chassis just taking our stuff to the next level you know when it's sitting on the shelf in a store you want to see a nice you know visual you know just like the old car kits back in the day you'd see the you know the car tricked out really nice on the box you know doing this and taking it to the level with our parts you know it sets it above the rest yeah i mean it's important you know and i think you know we've had the car stands out just for a little while now but um already you know kind of spreading out in the the eight scale world Mm -hmm. and i know in, in the 10 scale world as well uh, we're going to see more and more of them, and especially with the color options. Yeah, you got to have the color options. You know, not everybody's a, a, you know a fan of the blue or the, just the black, so why not throw red in? Yeah. So um, back into hit the tire side here a little bit. Uh, back to the easy button. Uh, we got some tires lined up here. Um, these are all uh, carpet, or you know, could be astroturf options uh, in the case of some of the fronts. But um, you know, one of the things we always get asked for is more pre-mounted options in the case of the wings Mm pre-trimmed but here we're you know pre-mounted tire and um, one of our more successful tires we've had last couple years is the fuzz bite uh, which is a tire we just used at the florida carpet championships which was at beach line uh, in coco we had that back in uh, november i believe Uh, dakota fen dominated the two-wheel class with these fuzz bites uh, on two-wheel drive front and rear and uh, something that we are now offering as a pre-mount uh these things these things go fast this is a, this is a fast tire especially on carpet uh definitely different versions of carpet 
uh, they're they're really quick on but uh, having the pre-mounted option out there has really uh, kind of helped us um, give an option to somebody that doesn't want to go through all the, mm-hmm. the work of mounting uh, but they want to give it give it a try and you know now we got the fuzz bites uh, front and rear for two-wheel drive and um, and then soon we will have a four-wheel front as well but just trying to increase this uh, the opportunity to do things a little easier or a little bit faster right again it's, it all goes back to that efficiency in the pits i mean when you, you know going between rounds you're working on things you know you may want to focus on a repair you need to do on the car and not have to think about mounting tires so again all these little easy buttons the little things were taken off of the table for the racers you know they can focus more on their game and you know another tire we recently came out with is the pin swag which is the reason it's named the way it is because we had a tire called the pin downs and we had a tire called the swagger so we kind of combined the two because the treads are combined so this is the pin swag also a pre-mounted version uh, again available in the white and yellow uh, colors and then kind of moving over to having a four-wheel front option we got the swagger four-wheel front so this has been a, our front tire standard um, on all of our uh, J Concepts races on the national series for several years. Uh, it's a you know multi-national series winning tire. Uh, it's definitely one of the easier to drive front tires. You can run on two wheel, four wheel, and uh, now it's uh, pre-mounted for the four wheel. So uh, you know all on the mono wheels, multiple colors. So we're really excited with having these options now for everybody. And I think it's just another move forward to making things better for the racer and having multiple options available for different conditions. Right. you got to have the options to you know, be able to work with out there. So that's kind of the wrap up here with the 8 scale and the 10 scale new items. We wanted to kind of drop a little note here about some of our fresh stuff because it happened so fast. Uh, we're in 2022 and uh, we're, we're keeping moving forward. We got a lot of large events this year, including our national series. We got some huge eight scale events that are coming up early in the year. So we wanted to make sure to show some of these new uh, items before we, we kind of hit the track at some of the major events. So we appreciate you watching. Of course, uh, I was uh, subscribe, like, ring the bell. And uh, as we say, leave a comment uh, because the comments are important. We look for product ideas and uh, we look for that feedback and uh, we appreciate it and we'll see you next time.